Hi everybody! In today's video I would like to introduce to you the Front Page Builder, a tool that lets you create a beautiful front page using the WordPress customizer interface. The page you see right now is built entirely with the Front Page Builder. Every section on this page corresponds with a section in the customizer, which you can adjust and modify according to your needs. In this video I'm gonna show you how I've built this page and we'll go through each of the sections in depth so you can learn how you can create a similar page yourself. So let's get started. First of all, we need to make sure we have a home page assigned in the settings of our site. You can do this in the settings reading in the WordPress admin panel. Alternatively, in the static front page section in the customizer. This will give a builder a foundation upon which to build its content. Now if you open the customizer, you can see the front page builder panel appear. It contains the general settings panel and the list of all available sections. In the general settings, we can enable or disable the page builder itself. If it's turned off, the original page content will be used. You can also enable or disable separate sections and manage their order by dragging and dropping. Here we can also set a background image, which will be used as a default image for the whole front page. Now let's go through each of the sections and see what settings we can customize. The first section we have here is title, and that is where we put the above the fault content of our site, such as title, description and call to action buttons. If you want, you can replace all this content with a slider by inserting a slider shortcode into this field. In the layout, we can decide whether the front section should take up the whole height of the page. And we can also regulate the section paddings by making them bigger or smaller. Next we've got the two fields where we can enter the section title and description. If I edit the text, you can see the changes right away. You can also insert markup text in here, for example emphasize or line break. Below we can see fields where we can edit the button links and caption text. You can also notice here these small blue pen icons. If I click on any of them, they point me to the corresponding fields. You can see these elements all across the page, which makes it easy to edit and customize necessary sections and widgets. Next we have colors and images, and that's where you can adjust the appearance of a section. We can choose the color scheme of the elements. For example, we can choose a dark scheme, which is better for dark backgrounds, like the one I have now, or the default scheme, which is mostly suited for light backgrounds. Here we can also set the background image and background color. If we don't have an image selected here, you can see that it loads the background image that we chose in the general settings of the builder instead. Also, if I scroll down the page, you can see this nice looking parallax effect. I'll select the original image now. Ok, so the next setting we have here is background mask. And that is a really interesting feature that lets you experiment with the style of the section. What it does is it takes the background color and uses it as an overlay for the background image. This slider here regulates the opacity of the overlay. So if I set it to 1, the background color will be used. If I set it to 0, then no overlay is applied and we can see the original image colors. However, it can be tricky to find an image that would look great as is. For example, in this case, even if I change the color scheme to default, you can still see that some parts of the image make the description difficult to read. So the best solution in this case would be to use a color overlay. Also, you can get really creative with it by simply changing the background color. For example, to a deep blue. If I make the background mask really dense, we can see this effect. We can probably make the color a bit darker, like that. You can also play around and find some interesting color variations. Next up we've got the anchor settings. And by anchor I mean this navigation marker right here. It consists of an icon and a text description. 
both of which you can customize in here. Here we can choose an icon and here is the description. This side menu enables you to navigate between sections by clicking on the icons. If you want to disable or enable this type of menu, you can do this in the header settings in the customizer or in the theme options of your homepage. So here we've covered the first section of the homepage. Now let's navigate to the next section, which is features. Here you can see the settings we've discussed previously. The paddings, title and description, colors and images, anchors. However, the key feature that separates this section from others is this widget area. You can see that by default it uses the services widget, which is responsible for outputting these four services items. But you can add any widget you like here, just by clicking this button. In such way you would redefine the purpose of the whole section. If we open the services widget we can see a list of settings we can adjust here, such as choose a layout, select a featured element, the featured element position and so on. I won't be covering all of the settings in this video, but it should be mentioned that this widget is based off of our services shortcode for Visual Composer, so if you want to learn more about it, I encourage you to watch our demonstration video that covers the services in detail. Next goes about us section, and here we can find the same settings we've seen before, such as paddings, title, description and so on. But here we've got this content area with a text editor, which lets us insert any kind of text and format it the way we want. You can use the features of the default WordPress text editor and insert tags, links, block quotes, all kinds of stuff. But you can notice that over here I've got this complex four column layout, and in the text editor I have only this one line of text that says content. This is a handy little trick you can do in the About section, if you want to display the original page content. If you enter the Content tag, and make sure to enter it with double percentage signs on each end and in all caps, you will see that it pulls content that is currently displayed on your original homepage. So if I open up my homepage now, you can see that it has a title and four columns of text, which is exactly what is displayed now in my About section. Ok, moving forward. Next we've got the testimonials section. And it's pretty similar to the services section we've seen earlier, the only difference that instead of the services, we've got the testimonials widget. The same goes for the team members and latest post sections. They all are based on the widgets that pull the corresponding post types, and the rest of the settings remain pretty much the same. So the next section we have is products and we can showcase here all of our WooCommerce products. Here you can choose which types of products to display, for example recent products or top selling products, the number, the number of columns, the sorting order, and you can pull up products based on their categories. The rest of the settings are quite familiar, which is the background settings and anchor settings. In the subscribe section we can insert a short code with the subscription form. You can generate it by any subscription form plugin, in my case it's MailChimp. Next comes the contact section. Here we've got an additional layout setting, which lets us choose between one column or two column layouts. It has a text editor, you can see that besides regular text we can also use text icons. And here we can insert a short code with a contact form. Again, you can use any contact form plugin for this. And lastly, we've got the Google Maps section. Here you can set up a Google Map widget, which will pull up the Google Map you see here, and insert your address and contact information using the text editor. So here we have it. We've covered all of the sections in the front page builder, and now you know how to build a similar home page yourself. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss our next video. Thanks for watching.